I found myself today watching a number of videos made by someone who I used to know. Someone who I said goodbye to. For what I felt were the right reasons. Because I felt they were holding on too much to something that did not work. And I always had perceptions about where this person was in their life. And even doubt about what, who they really were. <clears throat> because on one level, they seemed like someone who just wanted to exist and did not have a lot of humanity necessarily and then thought more about their problems than they did about anyone else's. And in this video that I watched, the person talks about how they wish they could have traded places with a child that passed away from cancer. And those are the times when you feel like a raging fill in the blank. <laughs> Sometimes we just don't recognize what people are because we see the world in certain ways. Like with my grandmother, <clears throat> who just recently went into a nursing home, and I, I don't know, my only exposure to people with uh, age-related challenges or uh, are directly related to her and the drama she uh, involves herself in. But if you go back through the history of our family, you discover that there was a lot of different drama and we were, um, we're a very paranoid family history. And, um, passive aggressive people to a point where uh, it became so manipulative you would use guilt to you know impact someone well i did this for you why can't you do this for me and then just using emotional abuse to make people feel like they needed to do things to show that they were worthy that's where my family comes from. And a lot of things that my grandmother uh, sort of was a key component of in my direct sort of immediate line because of the way she impacted my mother or she has impacted my mother and my brother, who are both very, very good people uh, despite that. And how it relates back to this person I'm talking about previously, hang on, hand cramp, <laughs> is... When we, when, when, when we were going to the nursing home these, uh, this last week to help get my mother, my grandmother, uh, uh, registered and placed into the nursing home, I witnessed a lot of other people with age related issues, uh, whether it be, you know, they had suffered from pretty serious strokes and they were just sort of, um, it's almost as though they were, they were talking out loud to make sure that they were still alive. And when I saw this video from this lady, I started to think that she's talking to make sure she's still alive. And how I've recognized her, or I've decided to uh, recognize her, and even how I recognized my grandmother. And it makes me ashamed of myself for certain things. There's certain things that are unavoidable because you have to be honest with people and tell them when something is not working. And you have to be willing to accept your responsibility in it. And I accept my responsibility in all of those things with relation to the person I'm talking about. I know 
primarily that I was incapable of handling the circumstances that she brought to the table. I had no idea how to, how to handle her situation. And be, I guess the way best way to describe it would be to say that I was incapable of handling her situation because I didn't necessarily believe her entire situation. Because every time she would go to do things, I've obviously made this a woman now, so. Um, <laughs> but every time she would leave to go do things, it was always under a cloud of mystery. Like, well, uh, let me meet this person you're talking about. Oh, no, you can't meet this person. Well, let me meet this person you're talking about. No, no, I, you can't meet that person. Okay, well, uh, where'd you go? I went to this place. Okay, well, uh, I'll go with you next time. Well, they won't let you in. So it was almost as though it was a fictional circumstance you understand it was it was as though she was telling me a tale and now based on seeing the videos that I've seen from her I don't know if it was all a tale or what was and what wasn't real I do know by just some watching some of the videos that she has misplaced events you know what I mean so in other words she would say you know well this happened at the same time this happened, which didn't occur. Uh, now, if you were taking dramatic license for a movie, uh, <laughs> then of course, you know, you may want to do that. However, uh, it's not the way things played out in certain situations. And I don't appreciate the fact that, uh, for myself, I don't appreciate the fact that I was sort of made, uh, sort of seen as a villain in some respect. But it, I know how it really happened, so I don't, I don't harp on it, you know what I mean? It just, it happened, so. And I really feel for her because I I see that there is humanity underneath it, but she's so overwhelmed by all the things that are going on within her life. And it's very hard to maintain your identity in that, to sort of distinguish yourself and to escape the pain and the hate and the fear of all of that. It's hard to separate yourself because you're clinging so much to just existence in some way. And in some ways she's not even clinging to that because she would be willing to give up that. And that, to give her her existence to help someone else, as she put it, what's left of herself. She could give the rest of what was left of her to a child that she would. That's your humanity peeking through all the pain and all the um, layers of edge that you have. And I hope that my, my grandmother finds some way of um, stepping aside from all the stuff going on within her about that she feels about herself and about her life and can look for some of the good things and uh, show some of the good things that she has in herself somewhere her devout uh, religious uh, conviction you know her she's very deeply uh, well in her in her earlier days, she was definitely more um, committed to her religious beliefs, and it wasn't um, hewed over with this sort of uh, uh, non-religious sort of uh, this non-religious um, glaze that had nothing to do with God, but more about the way she grew up and her perspectives on certain types of people and uh, in all walks of life. So, if that makes any sense. It does to me, but uh, you know, if, if, you've, uh, if you want to step inside my brain, um, I'll show you to the confusion room. Everything goes backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's entertaining, uh, but it's also, uh, you know, uh, d d d you know uh, bring drama me. Just, just put that up there.
So anyways, it's, 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 it, it made me, all this boils down to who am I going to be and what am I trying to maintain or who do I want to be? Who do I want to be in my identity? And I want to be someone who, and I believe I am in a lot of ways, someone who forgives and someone who accepts responsibility for the flaws within my own character. But I don't ever forget that I'm a very considerate person, a very supportive person, a very creative person, a very romantic person. I'm a very... I'm a very stable person. I'm also very adventurous. That's why I'm going on this um, adventure in two days to another part of the world for the first time. And why I'm going to another part of the country in the summer and to another part of the country uh, in uh, the fall. Because it's who I am. It's part of my identity. I'm someone who belongs out there, but I don't know where, and I need to figure that out. So explore your own identity. Who do you want to be? What makes you who you are? And let go of any pain and any anger and any of that, because you can't carry it with you. Well, realistically, you can carry it with you in your brain. Why carry it with you? is the better question. Our time on this plane of existence is so tiny. It's tiny. Why not make the best of it? Show the best parts of yourself. I haven't forgotten. I won't forget. And I thank you for sharing with me the beautiful parts, the wonderful parts, the wonderful elements of your character that were underneath, that are underneath all the pain. Thank you. Blessings.